Yeah, it's very interesting on kind of uh, the evolution of mastitis over the last decades. We've done a great job of uh, learning how and implementing control procedures for contagious mastitis. We know that tea dipping, the use of dry cow therapy, we know that having a good milking machine and identifying chronically infected cows, all of these things can result in um, control of pathogens where, that are considered contagious. The bugs like Staph aureus or Strep Ag, and these bugs that spread from cow to cow um, through droplets of infected milk. We've done a great job on controlling those. But what's happened over the, the decades is um, the cows have changed, the management of the cows have changed, and the pathogens have taken advantage of that. And so what we're seeing now is while we've got somatic cell counts that come down, down, and down, continue to reduce, we have these environmental pathogens which are out there having exposure to the teats of the cows and the environment, and what we're seeing is more um, mild or moderate clinical mastitis, and what we're seeing is that these, ma these clinical cases of mastitis are often caused by a wide variety of what we call environmental pathogens. Well, in the last 20 years, there's been a, uh, I think, a major change in terms of how cows are managed. There's been consolidation, increased herd size, uh, producers have become more focused on managing groups of animals as opposed to individuals. Uh, as well as the veterinary profession has changed concurrently. Uh, one of the uh, uh, important components is the development of new technologies that Im allow producers to enhance their ability to get more pregnancies. Uh, as part of that, there is integrated components in terms of postpartum cow health, nutrition programs, uh, employee training, associated with uh, uh, specific reproductive programs that are usually tailored to the individual farm, but they, are, they tend to be based on sound foundations. What we did in the Netherlands is that we sort of evolved that five-point schedule to, to, uh, to a new five-point schedule, just to keep it simple, and that's, that's about um, a goal setting. So the first thing we think you should do is, is judge whether or not your situation is optimal. And if it's not optimal, set a goal where you want to go. So if you have, say, a bulk milk cell count of 150,000 in 10 cases on 100 cows a year, that's pretty good. But if you have 40 uh, on 100 or 60 on 100, that's too much. And then the next thing to do is, based on, on, on the current situation, set a realistic goal. What do I want to reach? And that is, and, and I'm saying the word realistic because I think it's important, because the first thing people say is, I don't want any mastitis at all. And if you don't want any clinical mastitis, you're sure of two things. One is that it will cost you a lot of money to reach that, and two is that you will not be successful. So it's important to set a realistic goal on your, on your farm. That's the first thing. And if you've done that, there are two basic things that are important. One is um, um, uh, infectious pressure, as we say that, and that's trying to keep the germs, trying to keep the bacteria away from the teeth end. When they're not there, they cannot go in. So that's infectious pressure. And the other thing is host resistance. Because we do not live in a sterile world and we will meet, or cows will meet, tea dens will meet bacteria. And once they're there, you want to be the resistance of the cows optimal. So that's, say, hygiene, cow's hygiene, but that's also, for infectious pressure, cow hygiene, but also other cows infecting um, clean cows, so to say. So things to, to do is keep cows clean, keep others clean, and keep chronic cows away from healthy cows. That's for the infectious pressure part. And the other part is, the, sec the second part is the host resistance part. So again, keep bacteria away from the teeth end and make host resistance as good as possible. And then the first thing is to have optimal teeth ends. And that's, that relates to milking. So have your milking machine and your gear and your milking itself in place. To, to have the optimal defense there at the teeth at the teeth end. And once in a while, bacteria will pass that teeth end and they come into the other. And then the immunology plays a war. That's that sort of resistance of the cow itself. And we all know that, that some people, just like cows, are more resistant than other ones. Some children, some adults will get sick for every cold, every fever that passes by, whereas others have no problem at all. That's the same in cows. And what we want to do is help them to have that resistance as good as possible. And the key thing there is feeding. Feed them as good as you can. And what we tend to forget 
is that most of the problems do not start in the, in the lactating cow, but in the dry cow. Most of the prevention has to be done in the dry cows. And that goes for both the infectious pressure, the hygiene, as well as the host resistance. If a cow does not start up optimal, then it will have problems all lactation long. Cows are like diesel engines in a car. If you, if you heat it up too quick, if you start driving fast right away from the start, you know you will have, you will have problems. When the, when the engine is running, when it's going fine, no problem, it can go on for hours. The, 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 the cue thing, the most important thing is at the start. Give it a time to warm up and then there will be no problem. I think the most important thing if you work in a farm on other health is uh, to improve the general immune um, resistance of the animals by um, feeding uh, a good ration, uh, by um, reducing ketosis and acidosis as they are the major uh, problems in, in feeding in most farms, by improving the teat con end condition, um, by optimization of uh, the milking technique and op by the yeah, manual work while milking. And the third thing is um, yeah, to improve the hygienic situation in the farm, uh, in the resting and in walking areas, but also um, when doing the other preparation before milking. We had this one study that we did where we went to 13 farms and we collected um, Staph aureus from these cows. These were all farms we already knew had Staph aureus problems. We collected milk samples from infected cows and then we took those milk samples back to the laboratory and we did these DNA fingerprints on, this, on the Staph aureus. So these are just like looking at the fingerprints of you or I. Um, they really identify very closely the molecular makeup. And if an organism is classically contagious, if you went to a farm and you collected all these Staph aureus and you looked at them, our expectation was that they would have very similar fingerprints, meaning that they spread from one cow to the next cow to the next cow to the next cow. And um, in this instance, we only, out of the 13 farms we looked at, there was only one farm that we looked at where all of the Staph aureus bacteria had the same fingerprint. For the other 12 farms, we typically found four or five different fingerprints for that bacteria or molecular structures of that bacteria. And um, some of this just, just is, demonstrates that some of the things we've always believed about these bacteria as we learn more about them are probably not as true. And it also demonstrates that there's a broader diversity probably of contagiousness amongst the various bacteria. I think what's going to happen in, in the future years, we're going to have uh, better genetics, more emphasis on animals that can cope with the level of production with no uh, uh, detriment to reproductive performance. Uh, people will, be, will design facilities that accommodate the needs of the cow, so animal welfare which is already emphasized today, will be even more emphasized. Probably the most important thing, the guidance I give the farmers I work with, is first of all, um, mastitis isn't one bacteria causing one syndrome on every farm. So each farm has its own risk factors and it has um, a unique group of bacteria or germs that are causing mastitis. And probably the most important thing to start with is it each farm needs to do some diagnostic work to figure out which bacteria are most important on their farm. And then after they, they do this diagnostic work, it's very important to sit down with the veterinarian and come up first of all with some goals for the farm. And then um, after the goals are set up for the farm, to put in place some actions, distinct actions that um, uh, can be evaluated to see if, if the farm is making progress. And this is a very, very good place for teamwork between the veterinarian and the farm personnel because the farm needs a really a whole herd uh, utter health plan in order to really make progress.